You're clever enough. We'll see you next time on The Chase. Goodbye. Potato. Good afternoon, I'm Laurel Irving. It's four o'clock in Melbourne and these are our top stories. Roadblocks for rogue Victorians, the push to keep people home this Easter. Also a rescue mission to bring home Australians still stranded overseas. Punched, threatened, abused, the shocking behaviour directed at our frontline pharmacists. Police face possible charges after a grandmother's inhumane death in custody. And a dramatic and expensive end to a sailor's trip to Tasmania. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Laurel Irving. First at four, there are the most promising signs yet that the curve in Victoria is flattening. Just 16 new cases of COVID-19 were recorded overnight. That's the lowest increase in more than three weeks. The state's total now stands at 1,228. 50 people are in hospital, including 13 in intensive care. But authorities continue to hammer home the point that we could see a resurgence of cases if Victorians don't stay home this long weekend. One federal MP says there should be roadblocks on the Great Ocean Road. Let's go live to Nick McCallum, who's in lawn this afternoon. Nick, that's an extraordinary call. Yes, it is an extraordinary call, Laurel. We're here at Lawn and it is a glorious day. As you can see, it's not exactly deserted. There are people going for walks on the beach. There are people swimming and surfing. Under the existing rules, that's OK, but it's a far cry from what you'd normally see here on the day before Easter. Now, a short time ago, we joined a police patrol on the foreshore. Now, the two police officers went up to two German tourists who had come all the way from Melbourne to have a swim here. The police told them under the existing rules that was illegal, told them to pack up and go back to Melbourne. They also went up to a couple sitting on the beach. They too were told under the existing rules that is illegal and they were told to move. Now, there are so many people flaunting the rules. Victorian Coalition Senator Sarah Henderson is calling for police to set up roadblocks to stop people from actually coming on to the Great Ocean Road unless they have good reason to do so or unless they are residents or own holiday homes. Now, that idea is controversial, it's drastic and, as you'll see, it wasn't exactly warmly welcomed by the government or the police. I don't think we need, at this point, to be considering things like roadblocks. People are entitled to their opinion. Um, we won't be conducting roadblocks as part of the road policing enforcement operation. And so, Nick, how are locals feeling about all of this? Well, Lisa Neville said today there is nothing they can actually do to stop people who own holiday homes in this area from coming down and being in their holiday homes. They're perfectly entitled to do so. But she urged them not to do that. And certainly locals we spoke to today are also wanting, for the first time ever in Easter, for people to stay away. Now, the local council also points out if too many people flaunt the rules on these beaches over the weekend, they will close the beaches to absolutely everyone. Laurel. Thank you, Nick. A small number of Victorians continue to thumb their noses at stay-at-home laws. State political editor Brendan Donoghue joins us live now. And, Brendan, police will be out in force this Easter weekend. Well, that's right, Laurel. Uh, police have uh, said that they'll be firm but, but fair in enforcing these coronavirus laws while leaving uh, three avenues of appeal for those who do cop those $1,600 plus fines. Now, um, there's been about 17,104 police checks since uh, March 21, resulting in 569 fines worth almost $1 million. Yesterday, there were 1,065 checks and 78 fines. Police will apply three tests before handing out those $1,652 fines, asking three questions. Is your behaviour deliberate, blatant 
and obvious. Uh, there's three review levels for these uh, coronavirus fines. First, all fines are reviewed by local sergeants. Uh, those fined can ask for another police review. And finally, you can appeal to the courts. Police can't believe the idiotic behaviour, by the way, uh, by some Victorians. One motorist was inter uh, intercepted in South Melbourne, claiming he was um, out trying to buy some water, when in fact he lived in Juan Turner South. That's one hell of a drive. It's almost 40 kilometres to buy a $2 bottle of water. And two men, they were found uh, watching a, a movie in a car. Uh, six men were drinking in a park, while four people tried to hide from police when discovered just driving around. We're having people who are conducting gatherings. They're still doing dinner parties, uh, Airbnb-type parties, large groups of people together. Ask yourself, do I really need to do this? And if I don't need to do it, if my answer is no, I don't really need to do this, don't do it. And Lauren, uh, 160 uh, train station PSOs uh, will join 80 transit police this afternoon to patrol uh, shopping strips and other large public areas. They'll all be asking the same question, do you really need to be out of your home? Laurel? Thank you, Brendan. The UK has again recorded its deadliest day with more than 900 lives lost to coronavirus overnight. In better news, though, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's condition is improving, although he remains in intensive care. Hugh Whitfeld reports. Boris Johnson remains here at St Thomas's Hospital in the ICU. This is considered one of the best hospitals in London. He's being seen to by the best lung doctor in Britain. The Prime Minister is no longer working. He's on oxygen, but he is not or has not been put on a ventilator. Downing Street saying that he continues to make steady progress. And we've been given this update by the British Chancellor. The latest from the hospital is that the Prime Minister remains in intensive care where his condition is improving. I can also tell you that he has been sitting up in bed and engaging positively with the clinical team. Rishi Sunak there saying that the Prime Minister's illness reminds us that this virus respects no boundaries of status or geography. Proof of that here in Britain, in the last 24 hours, 938 people have been killed by the virus across the UK. Deaths in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It is the worst day in Britain of this crisis so far, worse than any of the days that Italy experienced. And it's considered the epicentre in Europe of the coronavirus crisis. It takes the British death toll now to more than 7,000. There is some hope, though, provided, of course, by the Queen in that historic broadcast earlier in the week. It is now emblazoned across the famous billboards at Piccadilly Circus. It is unfortunate, though, that very few people get to see it in person because of the lockdown here. Back home, the federal government has announced a plan to bring home thousands of Australians still stranded overseas. Political correspondent Tim Lester is in Canberra. Tim, one flight's already on its way. 280 people, Laurel, flying via Santiago for Melbourne. They were picked up from three centres around Peru. Most Australians, some New Zealanders. The Foreign Affairs Minister tells us they will pay their ticket price to get back here. She's also announced a deal with Qantas for additional flights out of Peru as well Argentina and also South Africa to bring Australians home in time for or soon after Easter. She points out that the federal government was saying Australians needed to be home as early as mid last month. We are also exploring similar options to uh, facilitate flights from other destinations in the coming weeks. We'll continue to work on getting Australians uh, home in a way that is safe for them and also safe for Australians in Australia. And Tim, some good news on the number of infections. Laurel, the number is 96. The Health Minister Greg Hunt proudly announced it here today as the new number for new infections in the last 24 hours, the first day in more than three weeks that Australia has had a new coronavirus infection number below 100. Obviously, that greatly pleases the federal government. This on the day the Science Minister Karen Andrews announced that a Victorian consortium would lead a $31.3 million effort to build 2,000 new ventilators for the federal government. Ventilators obviously vital in treating severe COVID-19 cases in intensive care units.
So we believe that we have in track sufficient uh, capacity to make sure that we are able to provide the units uh, that we need to ICUs across Australia. And, and the Health Minister Greg Hunt has again warned Australians of the importance of staying home. He says the next couple of days over Easter may be the most important weekend of all in our fight against COVID-19. Laurel. Thank you, Tim. It's a common message. A New South Wales minister has apologised after he was caught living at his holiday house despite orders for people to stay at their primary residences. Don Harwood admitted he'd been on the central coast for three weeks but said he needed the fresh air and thought he was obeying the rules. Police are determining if he'll be fined. The opposition wants him sacked. An Australian couple has been taken off a cruise ship off Uruguay after they came down with COVID-19. The vessel has not been allowed to dock after more than half of those on board contracted the disease. The Uruguayan Navy says the man aged in his 60s is in a grave condition. The rest of those on board may soon be able to come home on board a special charter flight. Police have seized the black box from the embattled Ruby Princess cruise ship. The New South Wales coroner ordered a raid on the vessel after the deaths of 15 passengers. Police are investigating if the ship's operator downplayed the number of coronavirus cases on board before it docked in Sydney. Cardinal George Pell is settling into life outside prison, completing his journey from Melbourne to Sydney. He's expected to live a quiet life now as a free man, but many are still furious over the High Court's decision to acquit him. Tom Saker has today's developments. There is still no sign of Cardinal Pell here at his newest accommodation, the Seminary of the Good Shepherd. Uh, after he arrived here around 9 o'clock last night to Sydney, there really is no valid reason for George Pell to leave his newest accommodation. Uh, that could be considered essential or legal and the same goes for visitors. They would all have to be considered non-essential. Uh, so at this time his only encounter with the outside world uh, was when he was met by Seven News at a Victorian service station yesterday during his commute up the Hume Highway. We spoke to some of Pell's new neighbours this morning who don't seem too phased by his arrival even if it is permanent. He's a free man. I'm happy to hear that he's free and uh, he can live a happy life now. We're not real happy at all. Just kind of release him like this doesn't really seem to be kind of in the public's best interest. The question now is how Pell will spend the rest of his time. Will he retire to the garden here in Sydney or resume some sort of responsibility at the church? And given Pope Francis's tweet yesterday where he came out in support of Pell and his release, it is more than likely that Pell could resume some backroom role within uh, the church. An overnight mayday call from a sailor in trouble has sparked a major rescue operation. Cambo joins us from Rosebud. And can the man run into trouble a short time into his journey? That's right, Laurel. The sailor had set himself a tassy, but instead wound up here at the Rosebud Hospital. The uh, dramatic rescue was captured by a camera on board the police air wing who was called in to make this rescue here. The 67-year-old had aborted an attempt to cross Bass Strait, but at about 7 o'clock last night, his boat ran aground at Corsair Rock, which is on the eastern side of Port Phillip Heads. Now, a swinging mast on the boat made it too dangerous to rescue him from on board. So what happened instead is that one very, very brave member of the air wing was lowered into the water and from that's where he plucked the stranded sailor to safety. Uh, Port Phillip Heads is always a, uh, a fairly treacherous part of water uh, with the incoming and outgoing tides uh, can form a extremely dangerous circumstance for anyone transiting heads and knowledge of the uh, environment is essential when uh, transiting through. Now, remarkably, the stranded sailor avoided serious injury. He was treated here for mild hypothermia. Police are still investigating his reasons for travelling. They're also exploring whether or not he should cover the cost of the sabotage, or the salvage, rather, of the boat. Mm, could be expensive exercise. Thanks, Cam. A surprise discovery as crews battle a northern suburbs house fire. That's still to come this afternoon. Also, a coroner's finding after a woman died in police custody. Could her life have been saved? And why a government lifeline has failed to reach some struggling childcare centres. That's still to come on Seven's Afternoon News.
With each coronavirus development comes more confusion. There's been no clear direction from the government. That's why every night, get the latest. Infection rates are continuing to slow. Breaking down what you need to know. Good news for charities, not so much for casual workers. The latest from 7 News, every night. Guys, you can buy them online at stepon.life. Group 1 Racing is at its best on day two of the championships. Get 10 bet returns this Saturday to use on any track, any race. So if your horse runs second or third, get your bet returned in bonus bets. Bet easy, raise your game. One in three Aussies live with high cholesterol. So make the change to Flora Proactive with plant sterols proven to lower cholesterol. Delicious Flora Proactive and an active healthy lifestyle can reduce your cholesterol in just 21 days. If your detergent isn't strong enough to remove stains without pre-rinsing, you're wasting up to 40 litres of water. Try new Finish Quantum Ultimate Pro. So powerful, you don't need to pre-rinse. It scrubs away dried on stains, degreases, and provides the ultimate shine. Stop the pre-rinse. Choose new Finish Quantum Ultimate Pro. Update your home with 25% off all lights plus 15% off all fans at Beacon's Home Renovator Sale. That's 25% off all lights and 15% off all fans. Sale on now. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritine for fast, powerful 24-hour hay fever and allergy relief from sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and skin. Because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritine clear. Head to Macca's fast, contact-free drive through if you need a little comfort and get a 100% Aussie beef hamburger for just $1.50. For your Macca's run, contact-free will be here. Bread is a part of life, so why not make life poppier, crustier, pumpkinier, down to the very last crumb. Abbott's Village Bakery. Every bit better. Your dream home can slip through your fingers without the right plan. But with home loan know-how from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, We'll help you take the right steps to make your dream home possible. Walk like a ram and talk to us today. Rams, greater together. I'm a Specsavers optometrist and I've got an important message. While our stores are currently closed for business, we're still open for care. If you require urgent eye care or are an essential worker, we're here for you. Visit specsavers.com.au. I drive a lot. I build stuff. I pull things, push things, and I hit things. And then I carry stuff. What do you do again? I drive the Hilux. Australia's number one selling vehicle, four years running. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Live from Melbourne, you're watching Seven's Afternoon News. In town right now, it's sunny and 20 degrees. Well, the multi-billion dollar JobKeeper package was hailed as a lifeline for many sectors, including childcare. It was hoped the program would preserve the jobs of childcare workers after enrolments plummeted. And while that has been the case at some centres, others say there have been unintended consequences and they're now on the brink of collapse. For more on this, we're joined by Melbourne City Missions Chief Executive Vicky Sutton. Vicky, you have two non-profit centres. Why are they on the brink of closure? Thank you. Look, our income has been halved under the JobKeeper relief package. It is an unintended consequence because it was expected that childcare centre operators could access JobKeeper. Melbourne City Mission can't because we're a diverse not-for-profit with lots of other funding sources. And we're in um, significant trouble moving forward. So basically you are being treated or, or your income is being treated across the whole of the organisation rather than just the two childcare centres by themselves? That's right. The test for the drop in turnover is at the entity level, the whole of organisation level. 
But Melbourne City Mission has a lot of programs across homelessness, disability, palliative care and even a school. And we can't use those funding sources to offset deep cuts in the subsidies for our childcare centres. So we need the Commonwealth to recognise this and ensure that we can either access JobKeeper for our childcare workers or there's an alternative source of funding that will um, provide the revenue that JobKeeper was intended to provide. Mm, what would it mean? You have 450 kids at your two centres, 90 staff. What would it mean if you did have to close? Well, we are fighting to keep our centres off open. We do not want to close them. Our families need us during this pandemic. So do our staff. They need the jobs. And the childcare relief package was structured to keep centres open, to provide free childcare for families and to keep employing staff. If we're unable to keep them open, our staff will be without work. And because we don't qualify for JobKeeper, even if we close our centres, our staff won't, won't have that security. So we're fighting to keep it open and not thinking about leaving our community without the valuable services they need, particularly at this time. Oh, fingers crossed the Commonwealth can sort it out. Vicky Sutton, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Fire has destroyed a home in Melbourne's north that was being used to grow marijuana. Police suspect faulty hydroponic equipment sparked the blaze. Smoke was billowing from the roof when fire crews arrived. No one was inside at the time. Several police officers could be investigated after they failed to ensure a grandmother was kept safe in custody. Tanya Day died in a police cell after receiving what a coroner called completely inadequate care. Shano Vella was in court. The family of Tanya Day has always believed her death was preventable and today a coroner agreed. In December 2017, Miss Day was on a Melbourne-bound V-Line train when an inspector noticed her asleep and while he had ignored other passengers sleeping, he didn't on that day. The coroner found within minutes he'd come to the conclusion that she was drunk and needed to be removed. Miss Day was removed by police at Castlemaine Station. With no safe options for her there, police officers say they were forced to take her into custody. Today, the coroner agreed that was the only safe option, but it's what happened next that the coroner says led to her death. With a blood alcohol concentration of at least 3.3 per cent, um, Ms Day should have been in hospital. Instead, she was left in a cell on her own and while it was mandatory for physical checks to be carried out every 20 to 30 minutes, officers made the decision to use the security cameras at times rather than physical checks. The minimum conditions of, of monitoring were not complied with. There was a culture of complacency regarding intoxicated de detainees. The Yorta Yorta woman fell and hit her head several times. This was not discovered by police for several hours. The 51-year-old later died in hospital. I find that Ms Day was not treated with humanity. Victoria Police says it takes any death in custody extremely seriously. They will now review their policies and procedures. Teething problems for Tokyo in its first day of lockdown. That's ahead this afternoon. Also a boy injured as yet another tree falls in Melbourne and customers lash out at pharmacists. We'll cross live to hear more about an alarming trend. Stay with us live from Melbourne. Beautiful lion, Justin Bieber. Rebel Wilson's Pooch Perfect, tonight on 7. With Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance, we guarantee all the repairs we authorise. Hey, good to go. Looks great. Uh... Get that? Oh. Leon's feeling. Call or search for a quote today. Who could have known that extra love could add extra pounds? That all those accidents could have a medical explanation? Or that the smallest changes could make the biggest impact? You did. And so did we. That's why Hills always starts with a pet's biology to anticipate their ever-changing nutritional needs for differences you can see, feel, and trust. So you're always a step ahead.
When unexpected guests arrive, don't panic. Use Airwick plugins infused with essential oils. Just plug it in to neutralize smells for freshness that lasts up to 100 days. Come in. Airwick plugins. At Harvey Norman, our spacious stores are open this Easter with our team practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Shop for fridges, freezers, washers, air purifiers, laptops, Wi-Fi, headphones, home office accessories, mattresses and sofa beds. Until Easter Monday only, take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card. Visit us in store or shop online from home with both click and collect and delivery available at Harvey Norman. Wishing you all a happy and safe Easter. Step one, zip, step one, zip, come, come together. together. Yeah, we can't sing. Step one, now offers zip. Buy now, pay later. So you can grab a seven pack for just $22 each. Total minimum cost, $154. And pay nothing today. You can never have enough. Keith? Sorry, have you had the jab? Wouldn't it be nice oh, if we were all <laughs> Then we wouldn't have to wait so long. Wouldn't it be nice to live together in the kind of world we belong? Wouldn't it be nice? Play now in store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. If you're craving the taste of your favourites, head to Macca's for a fast, safe, and contactless drive through experience. For your Macca's run, contact free, we'll be here. If you've been injured, talk directly to a lawyer, not a call centre. If you don't win, yeah, yeah. there's no fee. Call Arnold Thomas and Becker, specialising in injury compensation for over 50 years. A young boy is in hospital after being crushed by a tree at Healesville. The eight-year-old was swinging on a rope when the gum tree fell. He remains in the Royal Children's Hospital with a broken hip. Witnesses say it's a miracle he survived. Essential pharmacy workers are doing it tougher than most during the pandemic. Many report being physically and verbally abused at work. On one occasion, an Endeavour Hills pharmacist was assaulted because she tried to stop a customer from hoarding tissues. For more, we're joined by Anthony Tassoni, the president of the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. Anthony, talk us through some of the behaviour that's been seen in pharmacies. Good afternoon and on behalf of my pharmacist colleagues and our teams we're really grateful that you're taking the time to highlight this important issue. Essential frontline workers such as pharmacists and our teams and other customer service face-to-face -face roles that we've seen in supermarkets and other roles, we are trying our very best in really challenging times to meet the needs of our communities and unfortunately there is a minority of people who display rude, abusive and unacceptable behaviour. The majority of people are very appreciative and understand what we're trying to do for them, but there are cases that are really concerning for the safety and wellbeing of our staff. Why do you think it's happening? These are really challenging times, and I know the word unprecedented keeps on getting used over and over, but it is true. I guess people are frightened, they're unsure, and then really feeling not, not knowing what is before them at the moment. There's a lot of things that we can't control right now, but what we can control or have some control over is the way we behave and treat others. So we need to be patient, we need to be understanding of each other. We're all human here on the front line, here in pharmacies doing our best, and we have families as well. But in terms of why people are becoming impatient and whatnot when they come to the pharmacy, it could be because a medicine that they're looking for might be temporarily unavailable or out of stock. They might be seeking some hand sanitizer or a mask or something like that that the pharmacy may not have. When you come into a pharmacy at the moment, it may look a little bit different because pharmacies are trying to uh, monitor the number of patients they have in their pharmacy, encourage social distancing to help prevent the transmission of the virus. So the flow and the feel can be a bit different. That can be unfamiliar for people and sometimes people respond in a way that is negative or impatient and whatnot but we are trying our best to cater to their needs. And of course, and you can't take it out on staff no matter what's happening. What do you say to the people who are coming into these stores and, and attacking staff? 
So, look, thankfully in my own pharmacy that we're shooting live from at the moment, we haven't had any cases of any sort of physical abuse, thankfully, but there's probably a daily case of a verbal confrontation that we've had in our pharmacy for the last month. And I uh, approach uh, the patient or individual and just explain, we are trying our very best. We are sorry if we don't have it in stock. We are sorry if there's been a wait, but we are doing everything we can to help you. We are here to help. Please. Uh, bear with us, we are trying our very best. There have been occasions where I have asked people to leave the pharmacy. Mm. And, you know, th these, um, these stage three uh, shutdown provisions where we have to stay home and over Easter, it might be a good time for some people to take some time and reflect. Yeah. Take some time at home, stay safe at home and think, you know, what can I do next week to be kinder and be more patient to other people? We are all in this together. We're going to get through yeah. it together. But yeah. we need to understand where each other are coming from. That's exactly right. Good advice for everyone. Thanks so much for your time, Anthony. Anthony Chisoni. Thank you. There's been a mixed response to Tokyo's first day in lockdown. The usually frenzied crosswalk in front of Shibuya Station was nearly empty, as were other famous sites. But train stations were still crowded with commuters. A month-long state of emergency has come with a stay-at-home request rather than an order. A newborn baby's body found at a bayside beach. That's ahead on 7 News. Also, calls for clarity as social distancing rules confuse Victorians. And then there was one. Bernie Sanders ends his run for president, leaving Joe Biden to take on Donald Trump. Thanks for joining us live from Melbourne. Missing a footy? You betcha. Well, Seven Mate has got you covered. We're opening up Seven's Footy Vault to bring you the best matches of all time. We live the biggest clashes, the biggest marks, and the biggest hairdos. The best matches of all time every Friday and Saturday. What a finish! Which classic matches will be dusted off for Seven's Footy Vault? Friday, 7.30 on 7 Mate. Pay less every day at The Good Guys. Up to 20% off a huge range of KitchenAid appliances. $500 off this Acer laptop. This Dyson vacuum only 447. This 65 inch TV only 595. Loads more online in our catalogue. Only at The Good Guys. This Easter long weekend, BevMarks are discounting all mattresses by 50%. That's all mattresses, all sizes, no gimmicks, no exceptions. Sale ends 4 pm Monday. BevMarks, the sleep professionals. Better sleep, better life. Huddling at home? Try Domino's new chicken parmi on deep pan. With 22 succulent chicken pieces and crispy rasher bacon from just 15 bucks delivered. Order now with total peace of mind thanks to zero contact delivery from Domino's. Oh, little Bella's home with a newfound friend. Luckily, with Pino Clean Laundry Sanitizer, it doesn't matter where that's been. Because unlike detergent alone, which doesn't get rid of all germs, it removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria. It's not clean unless it's Pino Clean. Home for Easter means funs and fun. All day to play. Keeping fit. Everyone doing their bit. Hidden places and smiling faces. It also means hot cross buns, four to nine pack varieties, excludes brioche and free from gluten. Now just $3 each, save 50 cents. And thawed cooked extra large Aussie tiger prawns. Now just $29 a kilo, save $5 a kilo. This year, more than ever, have a safe and happy Easter. I hate it when you're in the middle of a jig and your ties start rubbing and your jocks ride up. Step one. These Lycra panels between the legs stop chafing right up. And this 3D pouch keeps the Lee Rody in check. Buy them online at step one.life. Step one. Lure, 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 lure. Group one racing is at its best on day two of the championships. Get 10 bet returns this Saturday to use on any track, any race. So if your horse runs second or third, get your bet returned in bonus bets. Bet easy. Raise your game. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Laurel Irving. Good afternoon again. Here are our top stories today. There's a push for roadblocks to keep people away from the beach this Easter. Also, a rescue mission's being planned to bring stranded Australians home from overseas. Prosecutors to consider charging police after a grandmother's death in custody. And a dramatic and expensive end to a sailor's trip to Tasmania.
Victorian crossbenchers are calling on the state government to review some of its social distancing laws, claiming some simply don't make sense. Opposition leader Michael O'Brien joins me now live via Skype. Mr O'Brien, you think Victorians are confused about stage three restrictions? Yeah, look, good afternoon, Laurel. It's, um, I think Victorians want to do the right thing. They're keen to do the right thing. Um, and they're asking questions. So, for example, we know that exercise is something that is permitted uh, for one of the reasons to leave your house. But what if you don't have a safe bike path near you and you and the family want to drive, drive with your bikes to somewhere where it is safe to ride? Is that allowed? That's a fair question. Nobody seems to be able to tell you the answer. There's confusion about whether people can actually surf. And they surf at a local beach if they're walking there. Obviously, you don't want people driving hundreds of kilometres to surf beaches. So I think the principles are fine, but we actually need more explanation on how it actually works in practice so that people don't inadvertently get caught doing the wrong thing and slap with really tough on. Is there also a danger, do you think, that Victorians might do the wrong thing because they're confused or frustrated with the rules? Well, I think, I think some of the application of the rules we've seen so far doesn't really pass the pub test. If a mum and daughter can sit together at the dinner table and have dinner, if they can sit together on the couch and watch a movie, what's the harm in them sitting side by side in the car while the daughter practises her driving? Um, you know, that doesn't seem to be about stopping this, the spread of the virus. That just seems to be a rule that doesn't make a lot of sense. I think the government wants, will have the community support as long as the rules make sense and people understand how it is about stopping the spread of the virus rather than just rules for their own sake. Yeah. We've heard from the Premier and the Prime Minister about this weekend. What is your message to Victorians for this very strange Easter we will have? Uh, look, it is, a, it is a strange one. Look, make, make the most of it. Um, I'm sure that everyone's got things they can do at home. Uh, find a few places for the kids to do an Easter egg hunt around the house. That's what I'll be doing. Uh, there's, sure, a list of, of odd jobs that people can get to. I know I've got a long list at home that uh, I need to get uh, stuck into this long weekend. So please enjoy the Easter, but try and stay home and certainly stay safe. Michael O'Brien, thank you for your time. Thanks, Laurel. Donald Trump has continued to blast the World Health Organization, accusing it of being China-centric. It comes as the US recorded its highest 24-hour rise in coronavirus deaths. Ashley Mullaney is in New York. Good afternoon. Donald Trump has continued his attacks on the World Health Organization, accusing it of acting too slowly to stem the spread of coronavirus and for favoring China. The president has threatened to withhold funding from the WHO over its response to COVID-19. Today, the organization's director general fired back. Please don't politicize this virus. If you don't want many more body bags, then you refrain from politicising it. The tensions come as New York heads into the apex of the pandemic, recording 779 deaths in a single day. The state now has more confirmed cases than any other country in the world. It's a crisis that's changed every aspect of American life and will likely dominate November's election, shaping up now as a two-horse race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden after Democratic Socialist Bernie Sanders withdrew. But as I see the crisis gripping the nation, exacerbated by a president unwilling or unable to provide any kind of credible leadership and the work that needs to be done to protect people in this most desperate hour, I cannot in good conscience continue to mount a campaign that cannot win and which would interfere with the important work required of all of us in this difficult hour. For now, the country's focus remains fixed on the health and economic impact of the coronavirus, with signs now that New York could be flattening the curve with social distancing, but the number of victims, those who've been infected for weeks, continues to grow. The remains of a newborn have been recovered from a beach at Seaford. A passerby made the grim discovery on a popular walking track yesterday afternoon. SES and detectives conducted a widespread search of the area. It's believed the baby girl was born between three and ten days ago. Police hold serious concern for her mother's welfare. Let's take a quick look at Melbourne's traffic now. 
Good afternoon, Jess here in the Bionaturals Traffic Chopper. At the moment, we're just having a look at a very unfortunate incident. As you can see here, two cars, one with a trailer, have gone into a barrier. This is citybound on the Tullamarine Freeway, just near the exit through the ring road. The left-hand lane is out of action. Police are on site, and traffic is slowing slightly past the scene, but no major delays. The world has changed since the coronavirus outbreak. Boost your immune system today with Bionaturals V Complex and Anxiety Stress Formula. Bionaturals available at all Coles supermarkets. And sport is next with Andrew McCormack. Thanks, Laurel. Coming up, Trent Cotchin gives us an inside look at the special piece of equipment that's getting him through the footy shutdown, plus an Easter surprise in store for the Demons, thanks to skipper Max Gorn, and virtual carnage as the supercars enter the world of online. Do it for the parents who are trying to be strong. Do it for the doctors who work all night long. Do it for the families who stand by and wait. Do it for the kids who need you to donate. The Good Friday Appeal. Give for the kids. These undies make you chafe. And these, as well as these. Chafing is horrible. These are step ones. The inventors of no chafe underwear. They've got these lycra panels between the legs, which means no more chafing. You buy them at stepone.life and never chafe again. With McDelivery, Maccas comes to you. With contact-free options, you can enjoy all your Maccas favourites, delivered to you via the Uber Eats app and Deliveroo. Without the right food, your roses could be shrinking violets. Rich Grow's Black Marble Rose Food is specially formulated to create the Rich Grow effect for bigger, more colourful roses. So pick up a bag today and grow you good things. All of the music. Yeah, oh! <laughs> this is it, this is it. You'll make a great dad one day. You think so? I know so. Elevate has more folic acid and iron than any other pregnancy multivitamin. Love grows with Elevate. Every 14 minutes, someone finds love on eHarmony. Now with more matches, a new compatibility quiz with deeper insights and enhanced messaging. The new eHarmony experience is better than ever. Start something real with someone right. Your dream home can slip through your fingers without the right plan. But with home loan know-how from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, We'll help you take the right steps to make your dream home possible. Walk like a ram and talk to us today. Rams, greater together. Since Dyson invented this cordless vacuum format, they've improved it relentlessly. Now they've gone big. Its cleaner head is 25% wider for faster deep cleaning and dynamic load sensing technology that intelligently adapts to different floor types to optimize power and runtime. Plus a bin that's 150% larger, so you can clean more before emptying. Only a Dyson works like a Dyson. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 Cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. Most teams wouldn't dare to do it. Really? Will it smash the record books? Anything can happen. The Chase, weekdays on 7. Welcome back. Melbourne's Max Gorn has a surprise in store for his teammates this Easter. Tom Brown is in the newsroom. And, Tom, there's a special delivery planned for the Ds in the next couple of days. Good afternoon, Andrew. That's right. Uh, their coach, Simon Goodwin, spoke this afternoon. In terms of Melbourne's preparations, he explained that he, in an ideal world, would like to get the Demons back training, if possible, on May 4. That's at least what they're planning for at the moment. He was also asked about Max Gorn's new leadership. Max has prepared a care pack for the players that should get there tomorrow. And Goody gave away some of the details of what's in this Easter pack. Well, I think his mum's baked up a, a few items, a few cookies for guys for Easter. <laughs> um, he's got a book for everyone. Um, um, it, it should arrive in the next couple of days. So I don't want to give away too much to the rest of the guys, but um, yeah, <laughs> the Max Gorn special pack for Easter. 
Now, Andrew, at 6 o'clock, I'll have the latest details on our exclusive report last night regarding the possibility of private ownership and investment at the Giants. Mark Stevens will also have the latest on the NRL's plans, plans to play controversially on the 28th of May, which has been met with uh, backlash from including their broadcast partners this afternoon. The AFL making it very clear to me they won't be influenced by the NRL's determination to play the NRL, of course, drastically short of money. They want to play on the 28th of May, Andrew. Yeah, that's fascinating to see how that plays out. We'll look forward to that at 6.45. Thanks, Tom. Essendon speaks that Conor McKenna insists he plans to cut his AFL career short in order to return home to Ireland. Every year I do think about the opportunity about coming home and staying. I always have to weigh them up. So I will be home in the next few years at some stage, but whether it's this year or next year, I'm just not sure at the minute. Meantime, Tigers uh, captain Trent Cotchin has given a glimpse of his home gym, which includes its own sauna. The Tigers fan recently purchased seven extra memberships to push Richmond up to 97,000 members. To see you guys show up and continue to show the support that you do makes me really, really proud. To golf and Aussie Mark Leishman says this health crisis hits very close to home. He's supposed to be walking Augusta National's hallowed fairways preparing for the Masters but fully understands why the lockdown is in place. Wife Audrey nearly died of the same lung condition that causes COVID-19 in 2015. We know how bad that can be. She was lucky enough to survive it. I guess it's been pretty tough for her but you know, we're, we're making the best of it and trying not to uh, not to get it. The Masters will now be played in November. In a dramatic opening round of the Supercars E-Series, spectacular crashes were the norm as drivers got used to racing from their living rooms. Fresh from winning a virtual IndyCar race, Scott McLaughlin took, took out two of three races. The Kiwi sprayed champagne off his balcony to celebrate. And finally, the footy might be off, but Carlton still managed to make one Blues fan's dreams come true. Jackson is a die-hard blue bagger and got a special surprise for his 10th birthday isolation party. Hi, Jackson. Happy 10th birthday. Um, I saw a little video of your Carlton party. It looks pretty cool. Hey, Jackson. Paddy Cripps here, mate. Uh, I heard it's a very special day on the calendar. It's your 10th birthday. Oh, how good's that for young Jackson? Uh, diehard Blues fans, he's an isolation party with Paddy Cripps and uh, David Teague. Not bad. Doesn't get much better. Pretty good cake, <laughs> too, just <you>. quietly. <laughs> Traditional seafood sales were well down today as Melburnians brace for an Easter unlike any we've encountered. Jodie Lee has more. Well, Easter will look very different for us all this year. Big family gatherings will need to be postponed or conducted via video. Thanks to coronavirus, it's also meant that trade has slowed right down for businesses across the state. It would be just like a madhouse through the aisles here, through the meat hall. But as you can see, there's not a lot of people. The day before Good Friday is usually packed at the Queen Victoria and South Melbourne markets, but today a trickle of customers kept their distance from one another. We've been coming in here for over 25 years and this would be the quietest I've ever seen this on a Thursday prior to Easter ever. Some states like New South Wales have decided to break with tradition and due to coronavirus allow essential stores to remain open on Good Friday. But here in Victoria all our major retailers will be shut including Coles, Woolies, Aldi, Kmart, Target and Dan Murphy's. So we're asking customers to be patient when they come and shop, make sure they plan their shop, know what they're going to have and if possible spend less than 30 minutes in store. Shopping centres like Chadston will also be closed tomorrow but when it reopens on Saturday just 23% of stores here will trade. Authorities say you should only visit those stores if you absolutely have to in order to help Let's catch up with Peter Mitchell in the newsroom for a look at what's coming up at six. Well, there's plenty to talk about. We're working on new details on the long weekend lockdown, what we can do and what we can't do this Easter. We'll take you through the finer points and track the traffic as police consider the plan to set up roadblocks to make sure people don't leave home. We'll have a last-minute guide on which shops will be open across the long weekend. Also the latest live on a tragic find as Homicide Squad detectives investigate the discovery of the body of a newborn baby on a bayside beach. We're following developments on a dramatic sea rescue off Portsea. We're investigating what's going on in pharmacies where staff are being abused and attacked on the pandemic frontline. 
And we'll look into your insurance rights during this crisis. Are you entitled to a refund? That's a special consumer report. All these stories and more are coming up in 7 News at 6. Laurel. Thank you, Mitch. A record-breaking divorce payout hasn't stopped Amazon founder Jeff Bezos from once again becoming crowned the richest person in the world. He's currently worth more than 180 billion Australian dollars, 30 billion less than last year. This year's Forbes list has fewer billionaires than usual as a result of the impact of coronavirus cuts into fortunes. A woman has dressed up as the Easter Bunny to bring joy to her elderly mother at an aged care facility. Residents are kept at a distance from relatives to protect themselves from COVID-19. So Anita Breen hopped into a rabbit suit, then into a cherry picker to get close to her 88-year-old mother, Joan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a doll. What's she saying? That's right. Aww. Okay. Love you. Bye. Yes, bye. Bye. The special Easter visit was a big hit with everyone. And now time for a check on the weather. Here's Jane Barn. Jane, it's a beautiful afternoon in Melbourne. It is, Laurel. The sunshine is lovely and it continues tomorrow. Then it turns wintry on Saturday. Those details are next. Home and Away is back Easter Monday. Do you uh, forget your shirt or are you just trying to get everyone's attention? What's a girl got to do to get the guy? A woman can't wait forever. Try flirting. Looks like a man who'd be good with his hands. Yeah, nothing comes to mind. Try yelling. I like you! I mean, what's a girl got to do? I just need a different tactic. Or don't say anything. Hey. Can't get rid of me that easily. I have to work harder then. One approach will work, but which one? I believe in second chances. Do you like me too? Home and Away is back. Easter Monday at 7 on 7. At Bunnings, we're here to help with some simple projects you can do while you're at home, like getting started on that veggie patch. You can shop online, order what you need, and we'll bundle it up for you. It's like having the warehouse at your fingertips. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 Cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. Huddling at home? Try Domino's new chicken parmi on deep pan. With 22 succulent chicken pieces and crispy rash of bacon from just 15 bucks delivered. Order now with total peace of mind thanks to zero contact delivery from Domino's. Meaning. We search for it our entire lives. The meaning in our existence. Work. Beliefs. Relationships. We're consumed by a need to find it. But it's when we stop searching and start feeling. Suddenly it's there. At Spotlight, Easter's what you make it. So decorate it, celebrate it and create it for less. With 40 to 50% off all ready-to-hang indoor roller blinds and 30 to 40% off all ready-to-hang curtains. Shop in-store or online. Sail on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. Are you confident you can cover your living costs in retirement? A Challenger Lifetime Annuity can complement your existing retirement income, giving you guaranteed income for life. Find out more at challenger.com.au. Created just for Easter from the finest Lindt chocolate with its own special bell. The Lindt Gold Bunny is back in store, but you'll have to be quick to catch him. Pay less every day at The Good Guys. Online offer up to $100 store credit on selected portable appliances. This DeLonghi coffee machine, $799. This air fryer, $429. This DeLonghi coffee machine, $888. Only at The Good Guys. $60,000. The risk. Look, I've chatted with the team. Is massive. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Most teams wouldn't dare to do it. Yep. No, I'm... Will it smash the record books? A score it? like that, anything can happen. The Chase, weekdays on 7. This weather report brought to you by The Good Guys. Contactless home delivery now available. Pay less every day at The Good Guys.
Hello again. We're having a lovely autumn day in Melbourne. It was a cold start. It was nine in the city and as low as four in outer suburbs. Then light winds and bright sunshine have let it reach 21. It is sunny across town. Currently in the city, sitting on 20, 19 in Moorabbin, 22 in Watsonia. Conditions are very different further north. Rain and thunderstorms are circling around the end of a trough that is down there into New South Wales. This is making it cooler in parts of northern Victoria than it is down near the coast, 17 in Echuca, 19 in Wonsaggi. Now, this rain is significant. Over the border, Daniloquin has recorded 30 millimetres. Hay has seen a whopping 52. It started raining in Echuca and coming into the northeastern parts of Victoria now too. A high-pressure system has moved east of Tasmania, bringing sunshine underneath. But that also pushes these moisture-laden winds into the east coast, and then that runs into the trough and turns it into rain and storms. The trough is slowly tracking eastwards and we have a cold front approaching. As the trough moves eastwards, so too do the storms. The focus moves to northeast of Victoria tonight and tomorrow. The rest of the state quite dry with a fair bit of sunshine. That front hits on Friday night and the early hours of Saturday. Expect gusty winds, showers with wintry hail and snow up in the Alps. Most of the wet weather is over the south and east. And it means we go from mild conditions conditions that feel quite warm in that sunshine to another cold outbreak with air that has come up from Antarctica. Around the nation tomorrow, Perth still has the heat atop of 36. Sydney, cool and showery. Hobart, warm and windy during the day, 22. Then a late change, just 14 there on Saturday. To Victoria, showers and thunderstorms over the northeast, possibly tracking into nearby parts of the northwest and into Gippsland as well. Otherwise, patchy morning fog, generally dry, mild to warm and partly cloudy. And a burst of showers hits the southwest at night with a cold change. So in the city, lovely, top of 23, partly cloudy. Cloudy, then it wet on Saturday. Laurel. Thank you, Jane. And that's all from Melbourne's Afternoon News. Thanks for joining us at 6. Peter Mitchell has exclusive details on tons of critical medical supplies being rushed into Melbourne on an emergency flight. But for now, from the 7 News team, enjoy the rest of your afternoon.